Since it's where the President of the United States lives and works, it makes total sense that the White House is among the most secure buildings in the world. And they take that security beyond seriously. Here are some of the incredible measures White House security takes to ensure the safety and security of the President's mansion. Among the many things that the President does not need is the possibility of getting shot at while going over paperwork or calling Prime Ministers. And so, all 147 windows in the White House contain bulletproof glass, but not your average glass. The ballistic glass used at the White House is some of the strongest available and very possibly stronger than anything us non-presidents can legally use. We learned about this security measure just recently. In November 2011, a man named Oscar Ramiro Ortega Hernandez grabbed his rifle, went to DC, and fired several shots at the White House from over 2,100 feet away. One actually hit one of the windows, very near to where President Obama's daughter was staying, though luckily the bullet did not make it into the building. A thick sheet of bulletproof ballistics glass, discreetly built behind the regular glass, stopped the shot in its tracks. Obviously, the White House isn't keen to tell the world exactly what types of ballistics glass they use to secure the building, but it's certainly high grade. The Vice President of Total Security Solutions, Jim Richards, summarizes that they're using level 4 glass, at the very least. That level of ballistics is incredibly strong, but likely not strong enough to withstand any possible attack. After all, not every gunman fires shots from seven football fields away. Richards believes the White House may actually be using Level 8 glass, which is the strongest currently available on the market. Adding to that, he wouldn't be the least bit shocked if the government utilizes a secret, even stronger type of glass that only they have access to. After all, the government is not in the business of giving terrorists any kind of heads up whatsoever. You know how many action and spy movies feature the heroes attempting to infiltrate some secure building, like the enemy's headquarters, only to be met with infrared sensors out the wazoo? Well, the White House has those too, but good luck slinking around them like Catherine Zeta-Jones in Entrapment. That's because White House sensors aren't done up in a unique pattern, like some kind of maze. They're simply there, covering every inch of White House property. The second a fence jumper lands, Reports reach the White House that someone has tripped the sensors. This also triggers alarms from deep underground the White House lawn as well, meaning White House security knows full well about any intruder hundreds of feet before the intruder even begins to approach the building. The SWAT team assigned to the White House rooftop, all of whom carry high-power sniper rifles that can nail targets up to a thousand feet away, are keenly aware of the sensors and alarms. Needless to say, they make darn sure nobody who trips the alarm gets very far on their quest. Knowing all that, next time you're watching the White House from behind that iron gate, please stay behind it, for everyone's sake. Chances are good that you've not seen the surface-to-air missile system around the White House. That's a good thing, because if you do see them, chances are you screwed up badly and are about to eat a missile. Yes, the White House has a missile defense system, though they rarely, if ever, talk about it. However, it's been in place since 9-11. After the devastating attacks on the Pentagon, the central DC area has become a complete no-fly zone. Any plane that dares violate that order risks getting shot down by one of the many high-powered missile launchers in place. We know little about the missile system itself, as the White House has never officially spoken about them. The only reason we even know that they exist is that in November 2019, the White House went on lockdown due to what the Secret Service called a potential violation of the restricted airspace. A CBS News reporter named Sarah Cook tweeted a missile battery system found on a rooftop near the White House, revealing how little the government was willing to play around with this possible crisis. Picture or no picture, the White House still hasn't confirmed anything about their missile defense system, though based on that picture, it looks to be the best in the business. It's likely an Avenger defense system, the kind usually mounted onto military vehicles come wartime. Very likely the White House has tons of those big boys. Pray you never see one outside of a tweet. You've probably heard about how historic monarchs employed personal food tasters to ensure nothing was poisoned. If the taster sampled the food and was fine, the king and queen could dine happily. If the taster fell sick and died, that was a sign for the royals to eat something else. While it's never been officially confirmed, the White House does indeed employ food tasters to protect the president. 
Their existence came to the limelight in 2013 when President Obama declined to eat at a meeting with Senate Republicans because his taster was not there. Senator Susan Collins confirmed that he looked longingly at the meal, but due to his taster not being present, Obama did not partake in the lunch. But don't think that having a presidential taster was just an Obama quirk. News stories have mentioned tasters for every president before him, at least as far back as President Reagan. More likely, however, George Washington and everybody since has employed a taster. It only makes sense. However, a presidential food taster doesn't just protect the president from a deadly poison, but also tainted food that could simply make them sick. For example, one day we may elect a president with celiac disease or a peanut allergy. A taster would make absolutely sure that no triggering ingredients reach that president's plate. In other cases, a taster ensures that the president doesn't eat anything that goes against their diet. George W. Bush and Donald Trump are both teetotalers, so tasters ensure that nothing they eat is cooked in wine or any other alcohol. It does make us wonder what happens when President Trump gets a hankering for McDonald's or Wendy's. Does the taster go through all the restaurant's burgers to ensure they're clean? If so, that poor taster would likely have quite the stomach ache for days after. All part of the job. Visiting the White House is on many people's bucket list, as standing outside the gate staring at the outside can only stay interesting for so long. However, if you want to actually get inside the White House and take a grand tour of every inch of the hallowed grounds, or at least the parts they're comfortable with you seeing, you'd better plan ahead. Way ahead. You can't just show up and request a tour that day. It would be way too easy for criminals, would-be assassins and general ne'er-do-wells to sneak in that way. So the White House requires that you request a tour no less than 21 days in advance. In fact, they'd prefer you give them even more notice, both due to the popularity of the tours and the need to vet whoever wants to enter the president's home. If at all possible, give at least 90 days notice and you're more likely to get the invite to take a tour. If you're the spontaneous type who can't fathom booking anything that far ahead, no worries. There are plenty of places in Washington, D.C. that you can visit without a reservation or by booking a same-day reservation. Check out the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, the Capitol, museums galore, and that one really nice Starbucks just a few minutes away. But if your goal is to see the inside of the White House, it's best you clear your calendar months in advance. Dogs are cute, cuddly, and make great pets. They also do great when stopping people from getting too close to the president, as evidenced by the guard dogs utilized by the White House security team. Since 1975, the president's mansion has been protected by a breed of dog called Belgian Malinois. These pups are simultaneously gentle and brutal. They're great with children and other non-threats, but when going after an intruder, they are relentless. They're big and strong, can run up to 30 miles an hour, sport a field of vision spanning 270 degrees, and can go from sitting around to zooming after a suspect in under a second. The dogs received national attention in 2014 when a fence jumper managed to evade Secret Service's attempts to tackle him. Since the intruder had no weapon, officials weren't allowed to shoot at him, so the only available line of defense was the dogs. Two of them, Hurricane and Jordan, did their job swiftly and efficiently chasing down the intruder and allowing officials to arrest him. Unlike with their defense missiles, the Secret Service was all too eager to speak about the good dogs in their deployment. Statements congratulated Hurricane and Jordan on jobs well done and let us know that Hurricane likes his Kong toy and Jordan loves taking walks on the White House lawn. But unless you've been explicitly invited to join him on that lawn, don't. One of the few completely transparent aspects of the White House security is the iron fence. Standing at 6 foot 6 inches and adorned with spiky tips, the fence has proven both sturdy and capable of keeping most would-be intruders out. The problem is, most isn't good enough for the sake of true security, and several public incidents of fence jumping in recent years have showcased the need to finally upgrade the first line of defense for the first time since it was erected in 1965. In 2017, the National Capital Planning Commission officially approved renovating the iron fence. For the most part, the final product will look the same. Iron bars with spiky tips will surround the White House lawn, allowing tourists to observe the president's mansion with largely unobstructed views. However, the fence will nearly double in height, reaching 13 feet by the time the project is complete. No longer will a decent vertical leap be enough to scale the fence. With a tip higher than a basketball hoop, it will become harder than ever to gain access to the White House lawn. 
It will also serve as a sterner warning than ever that would-be trespassers shouldn't even bother trying. As far as the Secret Service is concerned, if they can't make a good first impression, they might as well make a threatening one.